Hi, this is Max Katz with Apri.io and this is another lesson in our online training course. Um, so in, in the previous lesson we covered how to use set up uh, a REST service and then in this training session we're going to cover some of the more advanced features uh, when working with REST services. So to start I created this simple one-page app that uses Twilio API and in particular uses the Twilio SMS API to send messages. And this is how the UI looks. We enter the telephone number, uh, the actual message, a button, and then we can also see <clears throat> the message uh, that that is being sent. Let's look at the service quickly. And this is the service URL, and we can um, see that this is Twilio. So notice I'm doing a post, and then the request content type is URL encoded. Right, and um, I am using a proxy um, because I'm going to be testing the app uh, in a web browser, and the Twilio API doesn't support cross domain calls, so that's why I need to enable uh, the proxy. Now, when you're um, running a hybrid app which is installed on the device, then the cross domain issue doesn't play a role anymore, and so you don't need uh, this proxy anymore. But again, some services. Uh, support cross-domain calls and some services do not. And the basic idea is that I'm going to be invoking a service from the Apri.io domain and the service is running on the Twilio.com uh, domain. And the service is saying that, well, uh, I cannot be invoked from this, this domain. Uh, and that's why we need to go through a proxy. And again, many services do support cross-domain calls, so this is not uh, an issue. Uh, as for the request, we have uh, two, that's where we're sending the message. We got the from, and then we got the actual uh, message. Um, as always, uh, once you set up the request parameters, uh, you can always test the service, right? And we enter a, a two number. Uh, this is the default from number, and then we can enter a message. So these numbers I'm using, these are just uh, test numbers. Um, so again, these are not real numbers, but they allow me to test the Twilio uh, API. And then I can click test, and you, instantly I get uh, a response. So this is very nice because you're testing the live service. Now the next step is to create the response, and you don't have to do it by hand. Even though this is a simple response, you can always click this button, import this response. And what happens, you will end up, um, once you open the screen, you can see so the response was automatically parsed and this was created. So this is very simple, uh, definitely recommend using it um, every time. Um, but let's, um, uh, let's go back to the page and then we'll go back to data and then we have a service instance added to the page and let's look at before send. So before send, this is before the service is invoked, we're going to be mapping some data to the service. And this is how it looks. Uh, we're mapping the telephone and the message. Now also notice where it says GS, this is for JavaScript. So you can actually write some custom JavaScript um, and maybe make some changes to the values and so on. So that's always an option. And on the return, basically we're taking the, uh, the message that we sent and simply displaying it on the page. So let's give this a quick run. And again, these are just test numbers. And you can see the message was sent successfully and um, this is the message. Now, another quick way to test uh, a service is to open the Chrome developer tools and other browsers have similar tools. Um, and so you can actually see the request, which is really nice. Uh, so let's click this button again. And you can see right here, uh, this is the request that we sent to Twilio. So this is a very nice way to debug uh, if something isn't working, uh, but just to understand what's happening. Uh, so I also recommend you guys uh, use the Chrome Developer Tools or, or Firebug or in, in um, Firefox, or they also have their built-in tools uh, very similar to this. Uh, but let's see what else we can do. 
Um, so one more thing, one extra thing that I have here is I, um, I have some JavaScript here. So this is the before send, this is before the service is invoked. Now success, this is the once the service is successfully invoked. And um, what I can do is I can add any other actions to run on success, on a success callback. And in my case, I added a very basic JavaScript. Um, right now it's coming out, but I can uncomment it. And when I click save, and let's run this again. And you can see now this message was, uh, message is shown. So using the run JavaScript, uh, you really can uh, do anything you want once the service has been invoked. Also notice right here, the data. Um, this is the actual response that we receive from the server. Uh, this actual content. So actually, actually programmatically work with the data object and just really do anything that you, you need. Now we can also um, add errors. Um, if there is an error, we can handle the error and that's the error callback. And we can uncomment this basic alert. And again, notice the variables that are passed to you. Again, you get extra stuff that you can programmatically work with these objects. And let's test. Now, there's a special number that will give us an error. And you can see error sending message. Uh, and basically Twilio, because we entered this number, uh, or if there was a real um, error, Twilio responds with an error message. Uh, and the error handler uh, is now invoked. And of course, we don't see this message anymore because nothing was sent. Um, so instead of the success, we actually went into the error uh, handler. Um, and again, you're not limited to, uh, to just run JavaScript. You can add any other actions here as well uh, if, you, if you need to. Now, the last one is complete. And basically what happens is um, when the service is invoked, you're going to get um, the following. It's either going to be success complete or it's going to be error complete. But complete is always uh, is always invoked. Um, so let's um, uncomment this value. So we still have the error handler invoked, and then uh, we now see the all done. All right. Now, if we enter a valid number, for example, we're going to have the success and the complete still invoked as well. See, message sent, and then all done is invoked as well. Um, so this is just an example that you can um, set up the service, uh, again, to handle errors uh, or add some custom logic uh, using JavaScript. Um, let's go back to the service and um, we'll cover one more feature uh, and that's the echo. Um, so you might be in a situation where uh, you need to test a service but for some reason you cannot invoke the actual live service but you still would like to test it and see how it works. So you can set it up as an echo um, and the easiest way to do that is to actually run a test and then click use as echo and then switch to echo and then this response is automatically inserted and then you just need to enable echo. But basically what's going to happen is that instead of, instead of invoking the actual live service, uh, we're going to use this response uh, when the service is in echo mode, right? So it looks like it, the real service is invoked, but the response will always be the same, which is right here. And as an example, we can say that uh, hello from appre.io, this is the message and this is echo mode, right? And echo mode is shown here and then we can click test. And then center. And click send. And so you can see that um, first of all, our uh, callbacks, success and complete, were invoked. 
but then um, right here uh, we're getting the uh, we're using the response that will save the echo. And in reality, we actually don't even need this anymore. Um, I mean, you still might want to enter it, but if I click this button, uh, I'm still invoking the service, right? Because it's not going to Twilio now. It's not using the content, the echo response that I uh, saved. And again, this allows you to test the service without actually invoking uh, the live uh, the live service. Right, and um, that's it for this lesson in which we cover more advanced um, REST um, API service topics.